in the Holiday DIYer, the Winter Quilt Long Series, we are going to make the envelope block. It is so suitable because we're always receiving Christmas cards or mailings, or maybe we make Christmas cards and scrapbooking, and they mean so much to us, our correspondence. It touches our heart. And this is a simple block to make. You're going to love it. We're going to make a couple. You will need five inch squares to make your envelope. You will need one that's going to serve as the flap and one that's going to serve as the body. Because one square is going to get us four half square triangles when we sew these two together, we will have three of one and one of another. So in other words, we want to make two sets. Now all we're going to do is take these two five inch squares and we're going to sew them together all the way around. So laying our right sides facing each other, we're going to sew all the way around both of these squares to make our small half square triangles. We have a seam all the way around the outer perimeter. And I have my rotating mat here. This is a Fiskars. You can usually find these at Walmart in different places or online. I'll be sure to put an affiliate link down below. So we're going to cut them from corner to corner. So I'm just laying my ruler here from corner to corner using my rotary cutter. And I'm just going straight across. I'm going to now turn this and do the same thing in the, to the other side, corner to corner. Now we have four half square triangles, and I will do this one the same. Now before we press these open, because we are using this in our quilt, we're going to square these up. I have a square up ruler right here. This is a half square four in one triangle ruler. And this little jewel is an excellent tool to have. It can be used many different ways. If you press these open, we want them squared up to three inches. Now if you are doing that, you can of course use your ruler. And you can just lie it there at your three inch mark and square it up that way. Now, as you can see here, they're all, this one is almost a quarter of an inch over being three inches squared up by the ruler. So, of course, you would just line up your ruler. You could cut those sides. And then, of course, you would turn your square and do this side the same way. You would lay it in your three by three mark and cut off the difference. If you have a square up ruler, you would use the two and a half inch mark. Now let me explain so that you can understand. You have them, you do have it to where you can open them up and square them up on the three inch mark. And you also have them where you can do it on the folded mark. When you do it on the fold, you're going to be going by these white triangles over here. You're going to follow the dotted line. There's a small white dotted line there. You have a black and a white because we're doing it on the half size. So this two and a half inch mark is where I would be lining mine up to. And then if we were doing these open, there's two. This is a four in one, so you can do it both ways. If we are lining these up, see they're not quite three inches, right? The black mark indicates the three inch. You can see it right here, the two and a half, and here's the three. They're not quite big enough to go to the three inch mark. So you would move it up to square it just like the drawing, and those are your half inch, and that's how much would have to come off that whole eighth and a quarter on this side. That is why you're, once again, you see where the dotted line is hitting right in the fold, and that's on your two and a half inch mark, and you would just cut off the difference. That's how you use it. That's why when you, you, when you do it folded, you accomplish all four sides at one time, and it's just easier. That's why having a square up tool is very handy. Now, when you have it folded, remember, you're going to go by the white dotted line. There's a white dotted line following that triangle and the two and a half here. So you would just slide this seam, your seam line right there, up to the two and a half inch mark when it's laying down and you'll be able to trim all four sides at one time because it's folded. So I'm going to square this one up and it is really makes the job so simple. And it does help when you can see this one-on-one -on -one in person. 
and you can make it out better and if that's a common thing you can actually use some tape if you wanted to to mark that seam just so you don't have to reline it up every time if you're doing a lot of these blocks and then that way you have done all four sides at one time half square triangle when you measure it it should measure three inches and you don't if you're going to square them up folded you don't press them you want to leave them folded and then square them up and then once you have done that you press them open and then as far as the dog ears this one actually has a little mark for it if you wanted to do that but it's just simple enough to trim those off as you're going along and when i do that i know that one has been squared up that's kind of what i use as my gauge and i can move along really really quick so there's two ways that you can square up these to three inches open as for the half square triangle ruler i will put a link in the description box down below i do highly recommend this one's by creative grids it has the slots where we do a lot of the quarter inch stitching through the diagonal and it has it on both sides and then you can also do your strip sets at a triangle and then you can also do your trim offs folded and remove the dog ears while you are actually squaring up your triangles now while i am mentioning it this is ruler tape this is an excellent tool you can use to lay out seams on your ruler so that you do not have to even think about it so if that is a seam that you're using the most common then you would just place this tape on there it is just a, a an adhesive and it does not cause a problem and it just helps that to show up more and there you have them in different colors and you can put these on your rulers whenever you're using them this one is a very light color and i'll place it on here to see if that's going to be visible you can put it right on the line or you can just cover the line a lot of times i just cover the line so that i can see it better with my busy eyes and i'll turn this over so you can see when you have that seam tape going there you can pick up on it a lot visibly which i know you can't hardly make it out on this video but when you're looking at it you can see it a lot better and they have different colors you can use they have yellow they have orange they have pink just the most common ones that are used on these rulers and a lot of the rulers glow so you can really truly see it when you use this tape you do want to trim it off next to the ruler itself you don't want to have that extra folded over per se you'd be much better off to make sure that it's you know, trimmed up to the size of your actual ruler. And then that way you can easily find the seam line that you're working on. With all of our squares, half square triangles squared up to three inches, this is how you want to lay them. You're going to take two and bring them together, depending on which color you're going for. Now I'm going to turn this one to where that dark is the showy. You're going to add a third one and now you have your envelope and the neat thing is you're going to turn this one the opposite way as though the envelope is open and then of course you can make a secondary one because we did our matching fabric and you can do the opposite you can put the lighter color in towards you and then use the dark one as the flap coming in and the other one going outward and then you have two different envelopes and you can do a mix and match or make additional ones simply by selecting either a background color with a very prominent color that you want to show up or like i did selecting two separate fabric to put together and every time you sew the two five inch squares together and cut them on a diagonal you're going to end up with four half square triangles and you can make several christmas envelopes holiday envelopes and mix and match so we have two made that will go in our quilt we need to make one more and before we go any further on these we want to sew these together so we'll take the top ones and sew and the bottom ones and sew whenever you iron these once you've sewn this together we're going to press 
this seam open to the left and we're going to press this seam open to the right. Now as I was stating, the top one, I always press it open to the left and the bottom one, I press open going to the right. And the reason why is when we bring these two together, the seams will nest together right here in the center and you'll get no argument with it going underneath that sewing machine and it'll make it easy when you go to quilting it and sewing it together you won't have this fabric pile with these two facing each other i'll sew across here and press open now our envelopes are just looking absolutely beautiful and when these have a background fabric going around them, they will really, really pop and you will see them even better. So if you just lay them singly, you can see how gorgeous they are. If you wanted this envelope to flow this direction, you would simply add some background pieces here. You would need a five and a half inch square, two five and a half inch squares. Cut them in half and put one on this side and one to the other. And so one on all four sides so that'd be your background to go around these and same with this one so what i'm going to do is i have two envelopes made i'm going to make a third one and do my colors and i'm going to do it exactly the same way and then i'll return now i've made me an extra envelope with these two i'm going to have one on the right side and one on the left side and they're going to be laying sideways I wanted to place this one on point so I made this and I could also show you how easy it is to put this on point this particular block is five and a quarter inches long and it's finished so we have a, exactly a five and a quarter square with this block we want to put it on point and that is easy to accomplish all we have to do is take one of our background fabrics that are five inches wide. We'll need two of them because we need to put sides on all four sides of this block. And it's so simple and easy. You're going to love it. Basically, I take my five inch square. And this is what you got to keep in mind. This is five and a quarter. And whenever you measure the halfway mark of a five inch square, which is what we began with, it's going to be seven inches stretch. And that's how long it is when it's folded in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these and we are going to cut them on the diagonal. Just one side and turn them into four. So laying my ruler from corner to corner. Now we have four pieces and we're going to place these on the side. So you want to do two sides first because the others will overlap so i generally start out i will do the one side and to make this easier we have a center point on this particular block sometimes that is not the case when you're doing certain blocks but to make it easier we're just going to hand fold and finger press that so that we have this little crease and we can line it up right here on the side and we're going to stitch that down. We need to do the other side as well. And let me show you, this one you can actually see that it is centered and that that crease is laying right in the center point of the block. But if it were not and you did not have that crease, you could fold finger press it just like we're doing these triangles. And you can also do this. Whenever you're laying it on there and you look at it, you'll see this perfect square form right there in the center where those two intersect. You know you have it centered and that it's where it needs to be. So let's sew these sides down. So I have those pressed open. As you can see, we're going to have overlap, and that's exactly what we want. It's important that we have that overlap. So let's take our other two, and we are also going to fold them and give them a little bit of a finger press to find our center and we're going to line that up and when we sew these on we want them to overlap our previous ones and they'll go right over that edge to so just sew all the way across and you'll do the same on this side and remember if you're looking for that intersection of that perfect square 
and knowing that you're right in the center. Because we have this seam running in the center, we can easily lay it in there and it lines up. So let's sew both these sides on. Now before we move forward, let's go ahead and clip off these dog ears. You don't have to, but I think it looks a lot neater and it takes that pile and just lessens how much is stuck under there and just clip those off. You can use your scissors or your rotary cutter, whichever is best. I use the scissors, so sometimes it's just faster. Now let's press these open. And here we are. It looks perfect and it's just beautiful. And this can real quickly make this five and a quarter square now an eight inch square if i'm not mistaken let's measure it real quick and find out yes we have eight inches and this of course is eight inches now we do need to square this up because we're going to be attaching the other blocks to it and mine on this one side that seam can be thick when it goes under the machine and so I had to use a little bit of encouragement then when I ironed it it pressed it open with that soft fabric and that does happen because we're using cotton fabric and I love it I love it, it has that flexibility and as you can see this turned out so well that I'm really only cutting off the little ears here I mean there might be a smidge of something more but there's it's not even seeable it's just such a small amount and just keeping it lined up and now we have this block squared up to where we can add the others onto it and that is simplicity as well because we just need to put on background fabric in order to size up those blocks and make them eight inches as well. And then we can connect them all together. So let's bring them forward. And we know we've got this in eight inches. And I wanted to surround this with these blocks. And I wanted to center them up. And there's one on this side and centering it up so if i'm going at that actual seam line and then of course i already know both of them are five and a quarter so that's easy math i know that this is eight inches that's easy math and i can add on the difference on these pieces so where the question mark lies is the piece the width and the height in determining what's going to be up top so let's use our ruler and i can see that's an inch and a half i can see an inch and a half and this down here should be an inch and a half as well. And that will give us our seam allowance. So when we measure that out, we know we need an inch and a half <clears throat> by five and a half inch strips. We need to cut four of those and attach those to the top and bottom of these outer squares. We can now just sew one to the top and one to the bottom. Be mindful of which way your envelope is turned and making sure that you're, you have your envelope turned the direction you want it to go. I know this one's going to be on my left, and I want it angled towards the left. And this one will be on my right, and I want it angled towards the right. So I know to sew my pieces on the top and the bottom of them the way that they are laying. All right, so we have our side sewn on and pressed open. And it's the matter of attaching this to each side. So I'll take it to the machine. And I will place my right one and sew it down. And then, of course, I'll do my left and sew it down. So we now have our first horizontal panel. And they basically call them panels because, well, we have more than one block sewn to it. And it's almost the length of a panel by 18 inch long panel. Once it goes over half a yard you might as well call it a panel and you do have the option of doing the little envelope blocks separately or doing them on point for eight inches and mixing and matching and moving them about inside of your holiday diy quilt the long series our envelope block makes several and you can even make a whole blanket for this if you wanted to you could even think about valentine's and just doing a whole envelope with hearts. All right, we have our 8 inch by 18 inch panel made with our envelopes. We have learned how to put them on point. So if you just want an 8 inch by 8 inch square block, you could easily add the sides onto it, 
and put it on point. Then you can add these other envelopes all throughout your quilt. So this makes a wonderful quilt block for the holiday DIY winter quilt block.